Come on, shout it again till you feel it vibrate in your mask. Come on, shout hallelujah. I want you to turn to somebody and take about 90 seconds. 30 seconds you'll pray for one person. 30 seconds you'll pray for another person. And 30 seconds you'll pray for the third person. And I want you to find three people, just pray for them. Ask them a question. How can I pray for you? And then I want you to take 30 seconds and move quickly. One, two, three, pray now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Five more seconds and then switch it. Switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it. Switch it, switch it, switch it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. Come on, pray for them. Sound man, give me a little bass. Bottom. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The top is good. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Ten more seconds after you turn them loose. Then give God glory for 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on, give it glory. If you believe what you prayed, come on and bless it. Don't tap it. Come on, me. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My Verse 35. Do you love him? Shout out, love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. <laughs> Luke chapter 18. While you're finding it, we want to thank God for our Archbishop and we bless God for him. For our first and second presiders, our executive cabinet, to this host of Calvary men, pastor of this church. It's fine assembly. It's an honor to be here, sir. And a blessing to be here. As Jesus approached Jericho, a 
blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And he heard the crowd going by. He asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Shh. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What? Do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, Look at somebody and say, and they also praised God. And they also praised God. I want to talk with you for a few minutes on the topic, just what I needed to hear. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this place. We thank you for this opportunity and space and time. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm a little slow on the front side, so just give me a little time. One of my favorite movies of all time is Ray. The Oscar award-winning biopic by the legendary soul musician Ray Charles, portrayed by Jamie Foxx. Early in Ray's life, he watched his brother drown, and he went blind. By the age of nine, and during his childhood, his mother urged him not to feel sorry for himself. But one day, his mom realized he was absolutely losing his sight. And while they sat on the porch, she told him, no one's going to show pity on you. She said, nobody's going to just help you because you're losing your sight. She instructed him, learn how to use your memory. To remember the number of stairs and steps to the door. And one day he ran in the house, he tripped on the leg of the rocking chair, and he fell. And he screamed out, Mama, help! I need you! And she stood there and didn't offer any help to him as a way to show him that you're going to have to learn that nobody's going to help you because you're crying. Shh. And then it got quiet. He pushed himself up to his feet. He started listening to the different sounds. There was a teapot whistling in the kitchen. And there was horses and chariots moving outside the window. And there were men and women's voices outside the front door. Immediately, his ears became his eyes. He listened intently. And he heard the cricket hissing. And his mother stayed there silent to watch him. 
in tears and he quietly said to her I can hear you too mama you're right there you see at that moment his handicap became his teacher his handicap became his instructor See, handicap doesn't just mean disability it simply also means that the circumstance and the progress has just become difficult to success but it does not mean it's impossible it just means it's difficult impossible means unattainable but difficult means problematic and everyone in this room has some type of handicap. No matter how well you sing or move or dance or shout, there's something that's weaker in you. There's something that needs just a little bit more work. Your difficulty, write this down, your trouble becomes the gymnasium that you can work out your situation. And many people always want to run from trouble. But if you want to be somebody, your trouble becomes your trainer. Your trouble works you. That's why you can't always scream to get me out of trouble. Because your trouble will work you. Your trouble will pull you through your potential and cause you to be who you thought you would never become. You get strengthened over time. It is where your weakness becomes strong. But that requires effort, that requires discipline, that requires toughness. God will always use trouble to train a man. Trouble is a trainer. Joseph was trained by trouble. Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, threw him down in the pit. He ends up inside of prison, but it's in the way he's working his gift. He's in prison prophesying and he doesn't give up on God, but trouble is making him accurate as a prophet. When you look at Job, Job lost everything back to back. What kind of a day is that? One message after another. You lost this and you lost that and you lost this and you lost that. And his own wife says, why don't you curse God and die? Job says, woman, are you crazy? And he was trained through trouble. Samson, he gave it up and did what he shouldn't have done. He's in the mill pushing the wheel. And his trouble is training him. Because while he's pushing, his hair is growing. His trouble is training him. The woman with the mill, she's getting ready to make it and die while she's in the house. And she believes on the man of God. She has to go back and use her faith in trouble and check the sea. Yeah. Trouble is training her how to trust God in scarcity. How to trust God in famine. Elijah going down to the brook. Trained by trouble. Being fed by ravens. Trained by trouble and here you are in this room you want to run from your trouble you will not be who you want to be if you don't do your time in trouble oh I got nobody in here tonight because how can you be the comeback kid what are you coming back from I want to find out in this room tonight how many comeback kids are in New York right now how many of you have bounced back from what they said you couldn't come back from you bounced back from what the doctor said you wasn't going to come back from you bounced back from the education system you bounced back from food stamps you bounced back from a bad start you bounced back from a bad man it was the trouble that trained you Somebody say, don't run from the trouble. And we have in our text tonight, a man in Jericho who's without one of his natural senses. He's without sight. But his other senses are working effectively. 
in his difficulty. Jesus is going down to Jericho. History teaches us that it's about 17 miles away. And that it was this beautiful oasis of water and palm trees so that the pilgrims that would come through or the people that were on journeys would have an opportunity to replenish themselves. It was called the city of palms and it was also called the city of perfumes. Historically, there was an old Jerusalem, there was an old Jericho and a new Jericho. And so this is why you have the different accounts from Matthew and Mark and Luke, because we don't know if they're trying to create the writing as if he was departing or if he was, or if he was coming in. So you have different people. They all are talking about this man, but they're all talking about the gate, but one is saying one's departed, one is saying he's entering, and then Matthew says that there were two of them. Luke does not give us this man's name. Matthew do not give us their name, but Mark stamps him and tells us who he is. He tells us that this man's name is Bar Timaeus. He said, this is the son of Timaeus. And he's sitting at this gate. And in many of the villages, it was common to see beggars. Beggars were well known and they had formed a considerable community within the gospel era. And they were present everywhere in the public spaces, in rich neighborhoods, and in gates, entering and exiting. Begging was strongly condemned by public opinion. It was looked down upon, look at this, as evidence of being an unjust steward. Let that sit in. It was looked upon as evidence, you hear me? Evidence of being an unjust steward. Now this is critical as you pay attention because why does that happen? Because of what they have heard from the synagogue. Because of what they have heard from David. What did they hear? I've never seen the righteous sing. Nor his seed begging. So the scriptures have cornered them. And that happens in church a lot. Because we will give you text to box you in. To shape you and form your theology. To make you feel that you are cursed. They thought they were cursed, but the truth is, the truth is, the truth is, I get the righteousness. But the truth is, I have lent money to the saved folks. Oh, I ain't got no help in New York. I have given money to people who say they are full of the Holy Ghost. Now, what are you saying, Pastor Tubman? Begging is simply asking. It is asking repetitively over time. And then the beggar becomes unwanted and they become wondrous. And when someone comes around you that don't never have enough money to pay for their food, they are a beggar. Y'all ain't going to talk with me tonight. I, 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 I get it. I get it. I understand. There's this controversy here. Because you're telling me that I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him forsaken, but I have seen him beg. No, you ain't got to lie. I, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I have seen them beg. And then I got it. God didn't say it. David said it. It was David's small view of his lifespan of what he saw. Because if you look at your same Bible, there were righteous people who were caught in famines. There were people that just died that were saved and filled with the Holy Ghost with COVID-19. There is a controversy. Are you telling me they're not righteous? Are you telling me they're not saved? We must do a better job of facilitating the scriptures when we start boxing people in because now they are boxed in which leads me to my first point the point i'm going to talk about right now is learning how to survive stereotypes yeah be seated 
He sat by the roadside. Sat by the roadside. Stigmatized. Couldn't go to church. He was a social and a religious outcast. So much that we call him blind man Bonimaeus. Y'all ain't here with me tonight. Blind man is not his first name. Bonimaeus is. But people will always try to lock you down to what you're in. So when you get a divorce, that's what they call you by. I wish I had a witness in here. When you've been in prison but God redeems you, that's what they remember you by. When you've been a drug addict and God cleans you, they still remember you by your drug addiction. People will always try to label you by your struggle. Look at somebody and tell them, but they messed up. Tell them, tell them. Because trouble is my trainer. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. It was when I was in trouble that I realized I may not be able to depend on man, but I can depend on God. It was when I was in trouble that I recognized that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. It was when I was in trouble that I found out naked, 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 he still loves me. It was in trouble when I found out that no matter what I go through, I will not cease to be his offspring. Because the text tells me clearly, Bishop Jacobs, my times are in his hands. If my times are in his hands, then regardless of the time that I'm in, God will still hold me and he doesn't cut me because I'm having a hard time, because I'm doing time, because I'm having a difficult time. He still holds me as his son, even though you may not like me. My time is in his hand. He's in his hand. Tell somebody, survive the stereotype. Pharisees doing their preaching. Everybody's listening. And here we are sitting on the roadside. Sitting as life passes by. Sitting without sight, but sitting with the ability to hear What's going on? You know, we do the same thing that we do to blind men born of It's the same thing we do with Thomas. Doubting is his first name and Thomas is his last name. And he only doubted, I think, one or two times. A couple of times the man doubted and we made that his first name. I wonder if Ho is your first name. Hormonger is your first name. You wouldn't like that if they introduced you as missionary Ho. You wouldn't like that if they if they introduced you as Bishop Hormonger. You wouldn't like that if they if they, if they if they called you Bishop Attic. You wouldn't like that if they called you Bishop Prisoner. And I don't understand how the world can forgive. But the worst place to survive a stereotype is in the Lord's church. We're supposed to be able to be redeemed and, and be able to come back. But in the church, you hold it us back. You won't let us come back. You'll let us in and hold us down. You're not ready yet. When will I be ready? And how is it that you know when I'm ready when Ho is your first name? Always focus on what's wrong. Wow. 
We always focus on what's wrong. And I don't understand it. It, it, it creates great conversation. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand how you have a good time bashing somebody. How do you sit up with your saved, sanctified self and beat people with their issues and destroy them with their struggles but yet you want us to get up and give God glory when you get a mic. It's hard enough to survive it outside of the church. But to have to come inside of the church and join an institution that already has you stereotyped. Oh, she got saved, but I give her 30 days. Oh, he got the Holy Ghost, but I give him 20 more days. How do we create a culture of redemption when you've already declared me a bastard are y'all all right with me tonight they called him blind but he could walk listen to this they called him blind but his hands worked they called him blind but he could talk. They called him blind. And his nose worked. They called him blind. And he could still hear. Everything works. But one thing. And how do you discredit me? Over one thing. I want you to write this down. Matter of fact, I want you to write it down first and I want you to tell somebody. Write this down. Don't name me anything permanent that can still be healed. I wish I had a witness here. Write it down and then I want you to look at somebody and tell them, don't name me anything permanent that can still be healed. You trying to stamp my future with your actions out. <laughs> You want to accuse me. You want to label me. And you want to lock me. But what you don't understand, God will heal me from your label. He will heal me from what you put on me. And then when God used me, the first thing out of their mouth is, I thought you said. Yeah. Are you here with me? So we know he's blind. That's obvious. And I don't want to spend time talking about what you can't do. I want to talk about what you can do. He can hear. The Bible says that he heard. What's critical about hearing is that the art of hearing helps you speak correct. You may have voice. You may have the ability to talk. But you learn the, pro the, the, the correct pronunciation through hearing it when we preach we got to listen to the word and make sure it's right before we say it over the platform your hearing is just as important as your talking but you got to be careful who you let in your ear because everyone is fighting to get your ear uh, I, I think it's critical about this ear because even uh, Jesus when Jesus was getting arrested and Peter took that sword and chopped off that ear. It would have been simple for Jesus to simply say, leave him alone and, and leave his ear off. He didn't have no business uh, coming after me in the first place. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus picked up the ear and Jesus put the ear back on the man's head. Why would he do that? Because he that has an ear has to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying on the church. Not only that, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Jesus knew that even though you're after me, you're going to need me later in life. So I love you enough to let you come after me, but I'm going to heal you because you're going to need me. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
you got to learn how to let your enemy do what he does say what she wants to say because in the end they're going to need you baby have I got a witness here and you've got to have enough anointing to pick up that ear and put it back on their head can I tell you that you have the healing for your enemy in your hand but it's up to you to humble yourself down for the moment sanctify yourself for the moment and instead of fighting back heal them be seated everyone's fighting for you Satan wants to pervert your hearing just like he did Eve she heard the word he heard the word she heard it but it didn't sit so he was able to get in that hearing is the prince the power oh, yeah and what is said has to travel through his domain so he gets his hands on what's said and he will cause you to doubt what you have heard and it is at this particular point that when you get in a place that you're wrestling with what you heard wrestling with what you know trying to hear what God is saying it will create a conundrum for you because now you've got to figure out how to have point number two sticky thoughts the only way you're going to progress through this life is to learn how to have sticky thoughts somebody shout sticky thoughts see I believe that the reason why this man was able to position himself for healing because he had a thought that was stuck in his head we know that the healing or the faith didn't pay, take place when God spoke to him at the end of the chapter because if he did he wouldn't have called him Jesus son of David have mercy on me the fact that he called him that tells us that there was already an expectation about what he could do. So that means he had already heard about who Jesus was. And we know that he had healed lepers in Jericho. We know that he had healed Zacchaeus in Jericho and he stopped by his house. So it's not a coincidence that this man says, I'll sit myself here. Matthew says he's sitting there waiting on him to leave. Mark says he's waiting on him to leave and Luke says he's waiting on him to come in but it does not matter if he's waiting on him to leave or if he's waiting on him to come in what matters is that he's positioned himself that when Jesus comes by that he does not miss the moment I'm just wondering who's in this room that will do whatever it takes to make sure that you don't miss the moment if I've got to move to the side of the church I'll move to the left side if I've got to move to the right side of the church I'll move to the right side if I've got to sing in the choir I'll sing in the choir if I've got to work the camera I'll work the camera why because I heard Jesus yeah. is passing by be seated Jesus is passing by so we know by this messianic title that he understands that this is not just a prophet so there's something stuck in his head and if you're going to make it church you're going to have to get a scripture and stick it in your head because when that doctor tells you you got cancer and you're not going to live past another month either you're going to have the doctor's report stuck in your head or you're going to have what the word of the Lord says in your head. Look over and tell somebody you need some sticky thoughts. You need a word that you can stick in your mind. You need a word that you can recall when you're in a difficult situation. You need a word that you can use with your children. You need a word that you can use on your job. You need a word that you can use in your own church. You need a word you can use with your spouse. You need a word that you can use when you're feeling bad. You need a word that will stick 
with you because when you need that word you ain't got time to let your holy ghost fingers do the walking through the word of god you got to go inside and grab a word have i got a witness in here lean over and tell somebody i got a word in me i don't need a preacher to give it to me i got it for myself tell them i got a word in me look at somebody that will praise god with you and tell them i've got a word it's stuck in my mind it's stuck in my mouth that when i come up against any situation i put on that word because that word is gonna pull me out if i got a witness in this shout hallelujah son of David have mercy on me Jesus son of David not Jesus of Nazareth but Jesus, son of David, tells us that Bartimaeus has some history with the church. This is a messianic title that only an old school Jew would have a sticky thought to be able to know that when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming by, the scripture says that there was some noise. We heard some noise. If I'm in the right church, all we need is some noise. I wish I had a witness here. If I'm in the right church, joyful noise is all we need. When we hear a noise, we give him glory. When we hear a noise, we're praising him. When we hear a noise, we pick up a tambourine. When we hear a noise, we'll dance. If I'm in the right church. Where my drum at? Hit that bass drum. over there he's over there and he hears the noise he says what is that Jesus son of David have mercy on me what he's thinking about what he's heard and he's preparing for the moment. He's thinking about what he's heard. And he's preparing for the moment. He's thinking about what he heard. And he's preparing for the moment. The text says clearly, Son of David, mercy means I need relief. I need a break from this. Son of David, I need a break break son of David this is the opportunity for me to just exhale son of David I've been getting beat by my spouse and I just need a moment to catch my breath son of David I just need a moment to catch a wind son of David I just need some relief Have mercy on me. He cannot see, but there's nothing wrong with his voice. And there's nothing wrong with his ears. And when he heard that it was Jesus, it was just what he needed to hear. Because when you hear what you need, it will provoke you into action. 
And I came in here tonight into New York to provoke you into action. That as you move into this next season of your life, you're not just going to sit in church and scream and shout. The dance is good, but I want you to move into action. I want you to get ready for a brand new career. But not because God blessed you with it, because you're prepared for it. Not for it to just drop on you and you lose it because you're not educated for it, but because you're ready for it. Tell someone. Somebody, I'm getting ready for what he gonna drop on me. I'm not gonna lose my miracle. I'm not gonna let my miracle slide through my hands. It is your job to prepare for relief. That if he gives it to you, do you know what to do with it? I get tired of us. He gonna do this and he gonna do that. And then when he does it, you lose it next year. That's not on God. That's on your lack of preparation. So as we move into the next season, look at somebody next to you and tell them, prepare for it, baby. Prepare for it. Because if you really believe it, then you'll get ready for it. If you expect it, then you'll be ready for it. Because when drop God drops it on you, it was just what you needed to hear. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Son of David, have mercy on me. Give me some compassion. That's what got me in the text, Bishop, 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 and Bishop. <laughs> the text says those who led the way rebuked him. The people who were in front rebuked him. The people who were escorting Jesus was trying to stop the miracle. They thought it was more important for Jesus to be escorted than for Jesus to have his way. They was more into the protocol and the pomp and circumstance than to allow Jesus to come in and do what he came to do. And so, instead of looking for an opportunity to let God be God, they decided that they would be God and rebuke the people who needed God. Wish I had a witness in here. You have to be resilient in the front of rebukers who are trying to kill your opportunity to get what God said belongs to you. Y'all ain't here with me right now. The only reason they had to be that way because the rebukers were major voices. And when you have a major voice that says something wrong, you've got to learn how to use wisdom to receive it. And then you got to learn how to let it go privately. Because that was a word, but it ain't for me. I came here expecting God to pick me up from where I am. And if I have to be resilient in the face of your rebuke, then I will. Let me move. I know y'all don't like that, but that's okay. I don't really care. You've got this voice. That's on the outside. And then you've got this lesser voice that's on the inside. Because the stereotype will cause you to think differently about yourself. Because I don't care how powerful you are and how rich you are and how well known you are. At some point in time, what they say will affect you. And it will cause you to think differently about your own self if you don't have a circle that can encourage you at your worst. So he's having to fight the big voice and fight the inner voice. So if you don't have a sticky thought, you will end up with thoughts that are sifting through your mind. And all the ideas and the strategies that you had, you will lose them because you don't think you're worthy of what God's trying to do. 
and all of those sticky thoughts will start sifting through your head and you're not thinking that you're valuable and you don't think that you can handle it and God's trying to pour it on you he's trying to anoint you and you're letting it go through one ear and out the other because what they said has robbed you of your confidence but I came in here tonight to tell you like he says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought I want to find some people in here tonight that will take the thoughts that have been robbing you of your own destiny. If you've got enough anointing tonight, I want you to stand on your feet and I want you to take that right hand and put it by your neighbor's head and just start snatching thoughts. Stuff they didn't tell you that you didn't know, snatch it. Stuff they didn't know themselves, snatch it out. Now they're going to sit there and act like they ain't got nothing in their head, but snatch it anyway. Snatch that sticking thinking. Snatch that low level thinking. Snatch it out of their mind and tell them God anointed me to capture. Be seated. Can I get a hundred people to shout in this place right now? Be seated. Said, we're going to capture it. 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 But what I love about the text, and I'm coming to home. Jesus stops. He was passing by, and then he stops. So we survive the stereotype. And we have the sticky thoughts because faith comes by hearing. And when the faith comes by hearing, we don't stop there. It's partly what our problem is in the Pentecostal church and the apostolic church. We stop with the word coming in. Uh, but, but, but the next level is confession. Son of David, have mercy on me. And then the next level after that is corresponding action. Yeah corresponding action. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to fight in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to fight those demons that are telling me that you ain't supposed to be here. I'm going to fight those people that are telling me you ain't got no business being here. You ain't got no business asking for what you're asking for. Tell somebody you're sitting next to a fighter. You're sitting next to somebody that's holding on to the sticky thought. I'm holding on to what God said. And so he's there. And now Jesus stops. He stops. He stops. He didn't even stop for the woman with the issue of blood. She ran after him. She crawled after him. But he stopped. He stopped. Even though his bishops and his superintendents and and all of his missionaries and friends and all of his choir directors and all of the drummers and the organists said, no, 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 no. Keep going, Jesus. He stops. He stops. He stops. It's a surreal moment. That is my third point that I want to land on. That it is a surreal moment. This is a dreamlike opportunity. This is a shocking moment. That all of a sudden, when other people have been passing me by, people that could have helped me but chose to keep going, they were treating me like the man that was going down the Samaritan road and stepping over me and looking at me at the same time on their way to worship. Oh, his representatives wouldn't stop. His preachers wouldn't stop. His psalmist wouldn't stop. His teachers wouldn't stop. His deacons wouldn't stop. His adjutants wouldn't stop. But Jesus stops. What happens when Jesus stops? He stops right in the middle of the street 
and this is what the Lord told me yesterday I was sitting in the house yesterday thinking about you and thinking about your meeting and the Holy Ghost fell on me and I was sitting in the house and God said tell them at Pilgrim that I'm about to come closer to them he says tell them I'm about to draw nigh unto them and it shook me real hard when I was on the plane today I was sitting there on the plane and I was listening to the song Emmanuel and while I was listening to Emmanuel something shook me hard enough to scare me and I reached over and grabbed my neighbor's knee and he said brother what's wrong with you I told him he just got close to me he said who is he I said God touched me and he said well brother thank you because I need a touch look over and tell somebody he just touched me and he told me to lay my hands on you tonight because there's about to be a real moment in your life where God's about to drop something on you look at somebody that will praise God and tell them neighbor we're about to have a moment like never before if that neighbor won't say nothing to you get away from that neighbor and find somebody else and tell that neighbor tell them neighbor I need God to stop it looks like things are passing me by but I need God to stop have I got a witness here have I got a real praiser here when Jesus stopped Bartimaeus looked up and even though he could not see what Jesus did shocked me Jesus said send for him and tell him to come to me have I got a witness here everybody kept going but Jesus stopped and when Jesus stopped he said bring him closer and this is what messed me up Bishop it was the folks that was rebuking him that had to escort him up to see what Jesus had to say and here's what the Lord told me I just need 50 of you to catch this and when you catch it give God the glory he told me on the way over here he began to deal with me and he said tell them I'm about to pull them from the side and I'm about to pull them into my season have I got a witness here and that messed me up I said do you mean pull them into their season he said no I'm gonna pull them into my season tell them my season is better than their season have I got a witness here look over and tell somebody God is pulling you into another season have I got a witness here tell a neighbor that I'm tired of where I'm being but I believe God brought me here tonight to pull me out of the side and to bring me into his season have I got a witness here and this is where it got tricky to me he began to tell me he said tell them you thought that this message was about the blind man that this message was about Bonamias he said but tell them it is me that needs to know what you want because in the text I know Bonamias he heard that Jesus was coming but when they had the conversation Jesus asked Bonamias what is it that you want from me and God told me to tell you ask him what you want he said I'm asking you are you ready to tell me I just need to know what is it that you want from me have I got a witness here get out of that chair and go find one neighbor that will praise God and look at them in the face and say neighbor say neighbor you gotta tell tell the Lord whatever you need right now have I got a witness here get out of that chair get out of that chair and find the neighbor and tell that neighbor what is it that you want do you need healing 
tell him right now do you need a miracle tell him right now I just need tell somebody I just need some attention from my God so I start worrying and I started reading and I read in the Bible what Jesus he's listening to what I have to say and the scripture says this poor man cried and he heard me have I got a witness here find you a neighbor that will praise God and tell him neighbor do you have a cry where you can call God and tell him what you want you gotta call him and tell him what you want his line his line is never busy have I got a witness here you gotta call him tell that neighbor he's gonna answer but you gotta call him he's gonna answer but you can't be boozy he'll still answer you can't be too dressed up he'll still answer you gotta get up and act like you need the Lord cause he's waiting to hear what you have to say and when he sees you and when he sees you tell somebody that when he sees you he just wanted to let you know I'd have heard just what I needed to hear but you gotta tell me what you want I'm tired of you telling your brother I'm tired of you telling your sister tell me tell me tell me tell He says, tell me, what is it that you want? But this was critical. If he is the supplier of your need, if you never tell him, how can you get what you need? It ain't coming because you praised him. It ain't coming because you worshiped him. It's coming because you told him. Now what we're getting ready to do in the next 30 seconds is that you're going to tell him. We're not going to have a praise break. We're going to have a talk break. We're going to talk to him. We're going to tell him what we need. When I count to three, I want you to start telling him what you want. One, two, three. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Ten more seconds. Tell him, 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 tell him. Now listen to me, I can hear you, and I know you got your mask on. Listen to me. If you read the same Bible that I read, the Bible says that he shouted it out. If you want what the Bible says, the cool talk don't work. You dance harder than you talk. You're not dancing out of this. You're talking yourself out of this. Look at somebody and tell, we're going to talk first. Then we're going to dance second. Now I'm going to give you one more chance to open your mouth and talk to him like the man did in the Bible. One through three. Talk to him. Talk to him. There you go, there you go, there you go. Talk to him. Talk 
to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Come on. 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 Ten more seconds in here. Ten more seconds. There we go. Now you're breaking it. Now you're breaking it. That dance is easy. You practice that. But you got to learn how to talk to God. You got to talk to him. Anybody can dance. But everybody won't talk to him. Talk to him. We having therapy in here tonight. Talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Ten more seconds. Hang on to it. 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 I feel a breaking in here. Hang on to it. There's a breaking getting ready to happen. You got it now. Tell him what you want. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. Tell him. Tell him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Did you tell him? Lift your hands. Did you tell him? In the name. Did you tell him? Shut up, Andy. Did you tell him? Come on, 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 come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you tell him? Did you tell him? Did you tell him? Tell him, 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 tell him. Did you tell him? Did you tell him? Tell him. Come on, shoot up. Rokos Inamante. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Did you tell him? Did you tell him? Glory. 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 Talk to him. Come on in here. That's it. 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 Come on here tonight. Come on in 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 here tonight. Tell him. 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 I hear God saying if you told me, I heard just what I needed. If you told me, I heard what I needed to give you your miracle but I can't do it until you tell me you gotta open your mouth and tell me behind that mask open your mouth and tell me I can hear you I can hear you open your mouth and tell me 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 open tell him tell him what you need tell him what you want tell him what you desire tell him what you're asking for tell him tell him right now i'm ready to bless i'm ready to deliver i'm ready to work Work it out on your job. I'm ready to work. Work it out in your house. I'm ready to work. But you gotta tell me. Tell me. Have I got a witness? Tell it, tell it, tell it. 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 Don't worry about her. She all right. Let her go. She all right. She all right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. We almost there. We almost there.
come on here give him glory god wants to bless you god wants to heal you god wants to fix you god wants to work it out but you gotta tell him you don't have time to act like you can't talk like your mouth is closed you're not too pretty you're not too bad you don't make too much money tell the lord i, I need you and i need you now now in my body now in my soul now in my spirit i need you right now 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 watch it watch it watch it I love the shout and we getting ready to shout but we don't talk we hold it in he got what he needed to hear and then when Jesus brings him close, Jesus could have just sent the word and healed him where he was on the side. But Jesus pulled him from the side into his season. He said, I'm not just pulling you into your season, I'm pulling you into mine. So when he steps inside Jesus' season, all of a sudden, when he begins to see, it's instantly. It's not a change overnight. I'm not against the progressive healing, but I got enough faith to believe he still can do it right now. Glory to God. Now here's what I'm looking for tonight. I'm looking for the right now people. I'm looking for the right now people. I, just need, I don't want the people that don't want it to happen. I want the right now, 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 the right now people. I want it right now. I want it right now. I want it right now. <laughs> Say, God, God, pull me from the side, from the side into, your into your season. I'm going to follow you in your season. And it does not matter what's going on in my world. If I stay in your season, I'll always be on time. I'll always be in season and I'll always be on flow. Now I want you to grab one neighbor and tell him we're getting ready to step into a season. Tell him we're getting ready to step into a season. If that neighbor is looking at you like they got any doubt, turn that black hand to loose. Turn that white hand to loose. Turn that cream hand to loose. Turn that blue hand to loose. I'm not in a place where I need to be connected to somebody that don't have a right now anointing. Now you're holding hands with that right now. Now test them out, tell them right now, right now, see what they do. Uh, uh, tell them I said right now, right now. Tell them right now. Tell them right now. Where there's two or three gathered together in my name. We get ready to shout when I count to three that same hand. And you give God a right now shout. One, two, three, come on. I said give him a right now shout, come on. Come on in here. That's it, that's it, that's it, come on.
for the right now. Where the right now? The right now, people. That I need the miracle. Right now. to hit you with a right now blessing. One, two, three, four people down from the end. Who's the fourth person? God's about to hit you with a right now. It's hitting your house right now. Now, if you want that same blessing on you, you better give him a right now. Let's bless God for the right now. One, two, three. Father, do it in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. There you go. Come on here. 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 Come on here, glory! Shout to my right now! Come on, coach, come on, give 
Father, right now, God, in the mighty name. Oh, shut up, right there, glory. Oh, I feel it on your verse. Oh, my God. Give on right now. Now, 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 now. God into action. And right there where you are. He was coming closer to you. And that man stepped into Jesus' seat in his season, first lady. And the Bible says he went to praising God and walking with him. This is going to be a new season for you. I'm not talking about career. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about in him. That you're going to step into his season in him. To really fully understand in him I live, in him. Yeah. Right there where you are. Do you receive that word? Lift your hands. We're getting ready to go. Get on the keyboard, Devon. I see you stepping into your new season with him. Walking past the stereotypes. Some of the most beautiful people, some of the most incredible people cover up the most pain. And I'm looking at you and I'm trying to move past this because we church here, you know, but I really feel this pain thing. I was trying to keep going past it. But if I'm talking to you, if, if you know that I'm talking to you, come meet me down here. This pain thing. You're trying to, to, to survive the season of stereotype. People have called you things. You survived it. Come, 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 come. Quickly, 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 quickly. Because pain talks. Are y'all going to pray for them? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. I feel this pain thing. Come on. Come on. Some of you looking at me, it won't move. Come on. You one of them in the blue. Come in. Yep, you. Come in. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Come. Come on. Lift your hands. That's 20 more of you. Get down here quickly. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know I'm talking to you. Come on. Two. 
Jesus sent just what I need to him. You said what I need to him. Said what I need to him. Say what I need. Say what I need to him. Come on. Say what I need. Come closer, come closer, come closer, come closer. All of y'all, come closer to him. Say what I need to him. Say what I need. Come on, lift them hands. Say what I need. This is your opportunity to talk to him. Say what I need. Oh. I want you to talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Say what I need. Yeah. first thing I want you to do as you stand at this altar is this. I want you to do your best to reset your memory. That's hard to do, but listen to what I'm telling you. And everybody just point your hands toward them because they were brave enough to come here. Do that. Is that the best y'all can do for these people? That tell you when you walk by faith and you try to move past stereotypes and move past pain and we can preach you and you can and we can dance you but if you don't reset the movie in your head we'll dance and see the same video and we got to reset the video what do we need to see in the video we need you to flip the role from the victim to the person being victorious Seeing yourself as the victim over and over again destroys your confidence and it eventually destroys your faith. And you end up doing church, but you don't do healed. So the first step towards you being healed is having your mind reset. Seeing yourself on the victorious side. Close your eyes. And I want you to see yourself winning where you've been losing. I want you to see yourself high where you've been low. I want you to see yourself victorious where you've been losing. That's the first thing. The second thing, because some of the stuff that's at this altar is too quiet, I want you to say it behind that mask. And if you don't have a mask, I want you to say it inside. I want you to say what it is, and then I want you to say what you want it to be. Say what it is, and then you're going to say what you want it to be. Because you're going to speak those things that are not as though they were. When I count to three, we're going to do it. One, two, three. You point your hands at them and pray. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. That's it. That's it. He needs to hear 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 it. thing we're going to do is right there in that mood some of you are crying and some of you are in space you're trying to figure it out is this real or is this just something I'm doing it always feels that way in the beginning it's not church this is real life now you've reset it and now you said what you want to see you're going to spend the next 10 seconds clapping your hand and praising God that it's already done and you have to believe that by faith this is not a dance, it's not a shout, it's a weapon. 
that you are using to reset yourself psychologically and spiritually. When I count to three, everybody in the church is going to praise God with you and watch the Spirit of the Lord come upon you. One, two, three. Give Him glory. Come on. 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 Bless it. 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 Bless it, 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 bless it. Come on, come on, come on, ten more seconds. Glory, 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 bless it, 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 bless it. That's it. Come on, come on. That's it. Come on. That's it. 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 Come on. 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 That's it, baby. That's it. That's it. Come on. Bless it. Come on and 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 bless it, sister. Come on and bless it. 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 Come on, 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 that's it, come on, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, come on. Say what I need. Come on, church, say it to him. If you believe God did it, then come on, give him a sacrifice of praise with your lips. I want to hear the mouse. I want to hear the hand claps. I want to hear the mouth. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him for it. Praise him for it. Praise him for the reset. Praise him for the renewal. Praise him for the change. Because that is just what he needs to hear. Father, we thank you, and we praise you, and we lift you up in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. Amen. I want everybody in this room to get a simple seed in your hand. It's not a big seed. It's a seed that all of us can do. Everyone in this room can sow a $60 seed tonight. Everybody. Everybody in this room can sow it. Whether you're going to do it on Cash App or whether you're going to do it in this room. We're going to all sow a $60 seed. Everyone in this room. Everybody. Get your seed in your hand and let's worship the Lord in giving. Just what I need to hear. We get our seat in our hand to him. Just what I need. get the seat in our hand, everybody. If you can't sow $60, I want you to do half of that, sow 30 tonight. Let's support our meeting tonight. Let's give tonight. Just what I need.
you got your seed in your hand, I want you to stand on your feet. I want you to stand if you got your seed. Those of you that's got the seed, stand on your feet. Be seen, be seen, be seen. Stand on your feet. Stand, 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 stand. Everybody in this room, stand there. Get your seed. 60, 30. If you can't do any of them, I want you to get the best thing you got. Get it in your hand. Bishop Jacobs, do we just give it through text to give or do we walk up on the altar? What do we do? do if they have it cash, they bring it up? Okay. Even if you have it on your phone, come tap this altar. When I count to three, move. One, two, three, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If it's on your phone, get up, come, come, come. Tap the altar with it. Tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. To him. To him. Oh, What I need Whoa! 